welcome back. So, uh, let us continue. Uh, I will start today by talking about forward rates. In order to understand forward rates, what we mean by forward rates, it is necessary, it is uh, opportune to go back and understand what is a forward contract. If you recall, a forward contract is a contract which is negotiated at t equal to 0. All the terms of the contract are negotiated at t equal to 0. However, the actual execution of the contract, the settlement under the contract is done at a future date. That future date is also agreed at t equal to 0. In other words, all the terms that are related to the unambiguous settlement of the contract negotiated and agreed at t equal to 0 and then we have a settlement at a future date that is also pre-specified that is also agreed at t equal to 0. Forward rates are similar. Suppose you go to a bank and you uh, you want to make a deposit uh, at the end of one year from now, but you do not want to be exposed to the interest rate risk uh, during this intervening period t equal to 0 to t equal to one year, because the interest rates keep on fluctuating. Uh, the interest rates may change between t equal to 0 and t equal to 1 to your detriment. If you are making a deposit, let us say the interest rates go down and as a result of it, the possible income that you are going to derive from your investment which you will make at t equal to 1 will be lower than the in, uh, than the rates that at which are prevailing at t equal to 0. So, what you do is you go to your banker and you say that I uh, will receive a certain amount of uh, money from a transaction which has already been executed for example, and uh, I will make the, the money will be received at the end of one year from now. And when I receive the money, I will make a de, I want to make a fixed deposit with your bank. However, I want to be protected, I want to be immunized against interest rate risk for, during this intervening period. I want to be immunized against the change in the interest rates during this intervening period between t equal to 0 and t equal to 1 year when I will make the deposit. Then um, the banker may quote up certain rate, ok, I will give you this rate. Let us say the rate is 6 percent per annum for the deposit that you will make at the end year at the end of one year from now for a period of one year. This rate which you get uh, for a deposit that is to be made in the future is called a forward rate. In tandem with the terminology that we use for a forward contract, the forward rate is the rate of interest that applies to a forward loan, that applies to a loan uh, which is negotiated at t equal to 0. The terms of the loan including the rate of interest and the repayment and the in, uh, amount of principal, all these conditions are agreed at t equal to 0. However, the actual disbursement of the loan takes place at a future date and the forward rate relates to the rate of interest that would apply from the date of disbursement to the rate of repayment. But this forward rate, I reiterate this forward rate is also agreed at t equal to 0. So, this is what is a forward rate. Uh, so, to uh, repeat once more, a rate which relates to a, a loan either actual or uh, conceptual at t equal to 0, agreed at t equal to 0, negotiated at t equal to 0, agreed at t equal to 0, but which operates for a loan that is going to take place in a future date at say at t equal to 1 year, 2 year, whatever the case may be and for a certain maturity again whatever the case may be. Okay. So, a forward rate uh, represent yield for future periods, forward rates represent yields for future periods, but uh, corresponding to loans that are agreed, negotiated and agreed at t equal to 0. A forward rate is, is a borrowing oblique lending rate for a loan to be made at some future rate, just as I explained uh, a few minutes back. Now, for the, uh, in the case of a forward rate, we have to be very careful about the notation that you have, we are going to use. We assume that the forward rate is agreed at t equal to 0. So, that part is kept away from the notation. Uh, implying the underlying uh, assumption is that the agreement in relation to the forward rate has taken place at t equal to 0. Uh, however, we should know at what point the loan is initia initialized 
and at what point the repayment is made. So, we need at least two indices, at least two indices, one representing the point in time at which the loan is dispersed or the loan is initialized uh, or and the second index representing the point in time at which the loan is to be repaid or recovered. So, the difference between the two indices will obviously represent the tenure of the loan. I, uh, one more thing I would like to uh, emphasize in the event that uh, we want to quote a rate or a rate is not agreed at t equal to 0, but at a later point in time. The point in time at which the rate is agreed, the rate is negotiated and agreed would, would require a third index for its uh, identification. Okay. So, uh, in essence for example, if I use the, uh, if you use the symbol f 1 2, it means the forward rate that relates to a loan that is initialized at t equal to 1 year, it, it is a 1 year maturity and it will be re repaid at t equal to 2 years. Similarly, if I use the term f 3 5, it represents uh, the rate that would apply to a loan that would be initialized at t equal to 3 years from now and that would be of a maturity of 2 years, it would be repaid at t equal to 5 years. So, this is as far as the terminology goes as for forward rates. As I mentioned, we normally assume that the interest that the rates, the forward rates are agreed at t equal to 0 and therefore, we do not identify that point in time at which the rates are negotiated and agreed. We confine our identification uh, to the point in time at which the loan is to be released and the point in time at which the loan is to be uh, repaid or returned. Obviously, the difference will give you the tenure of the loan. Now, we come to a very important relationship, the relationship between spot and forward rates. What are spot rates? Just to recall, spot rates, spot rates are the current market rates for deposits. If you go to the bank today and make a deposit today, the interest rate that you will get for the appropriate uh, maturity that you are looking at is called the spot rate for that maturity. But if you are negotiating the rate today, but the deposit is to be made at a future date, not today, then it turns out to be or it is called a forward rate. So, let us now look at a arbitrage free relationship between spot rates and forward rates. Let me read out the relationship, then we will talk about its uh, uh, appropriate uh, derivation. To avoid arbitrage borrowing for t years at the t year spot rate or borrowing for one year periods in t successive years should have the same cost. In other words, if you are uh, making a loan or if you are making a deposit for uh, one year, uh, for uh, t years of let us say 5 years uh, at t equal to 0 at one stretch, uh, if you get a rate let us say that is S05 and the rate that you would get by rolling over that deposit for, for let us say for t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 year and then t equal to 1 year to t equal to 2 years and so on up to t equal to 5 years should give you the same cost. That is the underlying uh, no arbitrage or the arbitrage free condition that we need to show. Now, let us look at the justification or the rationale behind this no arbitrage or arbitrage free condition. Let us assume that I make a deposit of uh, uh, P 0 rupees uh, in this diagram, it is P 0 rupees for a period of 2 years. I make it at the current spot rate for 2 years, I make a deposit at one go of P 0 rupees for 2 years. And the rate let us assume that the bank gives me is S 0 to the spot rate because I am making the deposit today. So, it will be the spot rate, the spot rate from uh, for a 2 year deposit we call it S 0 2 and therefore, the amount that I would receive at maturity of this deposit uh, would be equal to would be given by this equation. Let me call it equation number 1. Right. Now, suppose instead of making this one year uh, one uh, one time deposit for 2 years, what I do is I make a deposit for 1 year and then at the end of 1 year I roll over the deposit for another 1 year. The question is should I get the same amount or not? The answer is very interesting, the answer is very intriguing, the answer is not necessarily at all. Why there is a justification behind it? What did I say? I said that 
I make a deposit at t equal to 0 for 1 year that is from t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 year and then at the end of the first year I will take the rate that is prevailing in that market at that point in time the bank the rate that the bank is willing to give me at t equal to 1 year and then make a deposit for another 1 year from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 years. And the question that I asked was whether I should get the same amount uh, as I have in e equation number 1 the answer is not necessarily at all. Why is that? That is because in the second case I am keeping my position open at t equal to 1 years. In other words, I am exposing myself to the possibility of the change in rate between what it is today for a deposit from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 years to what it could be when I reach that point in time at t equal to 1 years and make a deposit of 1 year at that point in time. Let me repeat the rate that I am going to get for the second leg of my rollover deposit that is from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 years is not fixed is not fixed at t equal to 0. It is it is only fixed at t equal to 1 year. Therefore, I am exposed to additional risk uh, in the in the second uh, uh, approach when I make a rollover deposit. However, in the first deposit where there is no rollover the rate is crystallized at t equal to 0 and it applies over the entire term of the deposit of t equal to 2 years. Therefore, because the risk content of the two legs is different in the second leg or in the rollover leg I am exposed to the possibility of the ra rate dropping or the rate increasing in fact, uh, because uh, obviously, it is uh, it could also increase there is no, nothing to prevent rates from increasing as such. So, the rate could change that is the important thing and I would be exposed to that change. Uh, I may benefit out of it, I may de uh, in undergo detriment out of it, but the important thing is I will be affected by that change. Therefore, in this case the principle of no arbitrage or the arbitrage pricing will not hold and there would not there would not necessarily be any relationship between S02 and the rates that I, I get in the second row leg or the rollover leg or the rollover approach uh, for making the same deposit. Now, let me modify the condition a little bit. What I do is I settle the rate at t equal to 0 for the deposit that I am going to make at t equal to 1 or for the rollover deposit that I am going to make at t equal to 1 from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 years. That I repeat I am not going uh, exposing myself in this in this new approach I am not exposing myself to the uh, fluctuation in rate the, or the actual rate that would prevail at t equal to 1. I fix the rate at t equal to 0 just like I fix the forward uh, the forward price of a commodity. I fix the rate at t equal to 0 ok at t equal to 0 whatever I get at t equal to 1 I will make the deposit at this rate the bank agrees with me to give this rate uh, for this deposit at t equal to 1 years. Of, in other words what I am trying to say is I make the second uh, leg of the deposit that is from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 years at the forward rate f 1 2. Now, what happens? Now, obviously, I know the amount that I will get at maturity under both the legs and assuming that uh, obviously, the conditions of default freeness uh, prevail in so far as uh, the lending and borrowing with banks is con concerned. Then, uh, the two legs will obviously, be susceptible to arbitrage uh, uh, restrictions and uh, if I do not get the same dip maturity at the end of 2 years uh, the uh, arbitrage free pricing will operate or the arbitrage process will operate rather and people will try to extract the arbitrage profits out of the system and as a result of which at maturity what we will have is A is equal to A star where A star is this equation. Please note this very fundamental thing very important thing we are considering a forward rate a rate that is fixed at t equal to 0. So, that the position at t equal to 1 of my deposit of my rollover leg is not open it is not open it is crystallized it is fixed at t equal to 0 it is negotiated and fixed at t equal to 0 and as a result of which this leg that is leg the leg represented by equation 2 has the same level of risk as equation 1 both of them are agreed upon at t equal to 0 and both of them the outcomes are under both of them are known with certainty. 
So, that being the case A must equal to A star and that gives leads us to the relationship which is given in equation number 3 and this is a very very important relationship. On the left hand side we have the spot rate for 2 years that is S 0 2 and on the right hand side we have the spot and forward rates. Uh, obviously, S 0 1 is equal to F 0 1. So, I can also replace this S 0 1 by F 0 1 if I like it does not really matter, but the bottom line is that this relationship uh, arises out of uh, arbitrage free pricing and this relationship is very very important. Okay. Now, we can generalize this relationship I have talked about a deposit of 2 years we can extend this deposit instead of 2 years there is nothing sacrosanct about the deposit being of 2 years it can be of 3 years 5 years 50 years or 100 years whatever the case may be. So, let us generalize it to t years and on that basis I get equation number 4 here equation number 4 here and equation number 4 can further be written in the form of equation number 5 by replacing F 0 1 by S 0 1. Obviously, the uh, forward rate between t equal to 0 and t equal to 1 is the spot rate and therefore, we can replace F 0 1 by F 0 5 and this gives us equation number 5 and these equations can be further put in different forms uh, and we arrive at uh, the various uh, various right combinations on the right hand side for this expression that we have at the left hand side and we get this as equation number 6. Please note these are very fundamental relationships between spot rates and forward rate, uh, but the important thing is they arise out, out of the conditions of arbitrage free pricing. Now, we shall use these relations to value the bond. We have already valued the bond using the spectrum of spot rates. We already know that uh, the uh, intrinsic value of a bond or the arbitrage free value of a bond is equal to the present value of all future cash flows emanating from the bond discounted at the appropriate risk adjusted discount rates but these please note these rates are spot rates. So, discounted at the appropriate risk adjusted spot rates that is important. So, now we make use of this arbitrage relationship or no arbitrage relationship between spot rates and forward rates to express the same formula in terms of the forward rates. Here is the expression this expression relates to a T year maturity bond with cash flow C T uh, capital T year maturity bond uh, the cash flows are C small t at the point in time small t. Small t is any arbitrary point in time at which cash flows occur during the life of the bond which is capital T years. Then from the arbitrage free pricing model this is what we have this is equation number 1 this is brought forward from the earlier lecture on this particular topic V 0 is equal to C 1 upon 1 plus S 0 1 plus C 2 upon 1 plus S 0 2 whole square and so on. Using this condition that we have just now derived in the earlier uh, in the last few minutes about the relationship between the spot rates and the forward rates we can write equation number 1 in the form of equation number 2 which these please note uh, the, the equivalence between these two equations that is equation number 1 and equation number 2 emanates from the arbitrage free relationship between spot rates and forward rates of interest. So, obviously, this would hold in an arbitrage free condition arbitrage free market where uh, arbitrage uh, arbitrages are highly active or highly efficient markets let us say where arbitrages are extremely active and any arbitrage op opportunity is quickly siphoned away. Now, now, we talk about the forward price of a bond. The forward price of a uh, of a uh, underlying asset of a stock was discussed when I discussed certain examples about uh, about uh, the process of arbitrage, how arbitrage free pricing takes place. I discussed the example of the uh, forward price of a commodity or of an asset, which forming the underlying asset of a of a forward contract. The same rationale applies to the forward price of a bond that is 
the price of a bond at a future date, but the price worked out as of today uh, as on today as on today for the delivery of the asset at a future date deliver, delivery of the bond at a future date. And what we have is it is simply an extension of that formula. If you recall what was the um, formula for the uh, forward price of an underlying asset, it was given by F 0 is equal to S 0 e to the power R t. In other words, it is simply the future value of the spot price future value of this spot price. The same rationale applies here and as you can see here this is nothing but the future value of the spot price. V 0 is the spot price and V 0 into 1 plus S 0 1 is the future value of that price. Of course, if there is any cash payment during the life of the forward contract then obviously, the future value of that cash payment or that uh, uh, div, uh, interest or dividend as the case may be has to be deducted and that represents this number. So, the important thing please note here is that the price that I am working out here, the price that I am getting here is the forward price of the bond immediately after, uh, after reiterated uh, after emphasized after the coupon payment is made. If the price is to be worked up, uh, out or the forward price is to be worked out immediately before the coupon payment is made, then this term would not appear. Then the price would be given by only this expression. Uh, and if the price is to, to be worked out after the coupon payment, then it would be this whole expression that is here. Then the coupon obviously has to be deducted because the coupon has already been paid out. So, why is this the rationale behind this is because if you are going to buy the bond after the coupon payment is made then you are not going to get the coupon payment and the price has to be reduced by the amount of that coupon payment. And uh, uh, this if you use the no arbitrage relationship between the uh, spot and future prices or the forward rates spot rates and forward rates and uh, the this equation let me show you the, this particular equation uh, this is equation number 2 here. If we use this equation here in equation number uh, 1 in equation number 1 on this slide if I use equation number 2 of the previous slide what I get is this expression that is equation number 2 on this slide. And please note uh, this shows what this shows that the forward rate of a particular instrument of a particular bond is equal to the value at that point in time, the present value at that point in time that is at t equal to 1 year of all future cash flows arising from the bond discounted at the appropriate forward rates. I repeat let me reiterate the forward price of a bond or the forward value of a bond at a future date let us say t equal to 1 year is equal to the present value that is the value at t equal to 1 year please not present value not at t equal to 0 not as, as of today the present value worked out at t equal to 1 year of all future cash flows that is C 2, C 3, C 4, C 5 and so on entire tenure of the bond discounted at the appropriate forward rates in the manner that is shown by equation number 2 in this expression. Similarly, uh, the forward rate for a 2 year would be equal to the future value of the uh, of the value of the bond at t equal to uh, t equal to 0 minus the future value of the cash flows arising out of this bond up to the date of valuation these these are represented by these two figures please note again that this value of the bond is equal to the uh, uh, value of the bond after the second coupon first and second coupon both are paid so this is the post interest valuation at of t equal to 2 years. If the second coupon is not paid the valuation is to be done before the second coupon is paid then this term goes out of the reckoning and the value is given by the remaining expression. Again as you can see here uh, this equals the present value at t equal to 2 years of all future cash flows discounted at the appropriate forward rate in the manner that is given in equation number 3. Let us do an example to explain whatever I have discussed so far. 
consider a 20 percent annual bond, 20 percent is the coupon rate, the payments on the bond are annual and the face value of the bond is 100. Let me repeat, it is a 20 percent coupon bond, the face value is 100 and the payment, the frequency of payment of the coupon is annual. The remaining maturity of the bond is 3 years, calculate the forward price of the bond at the end of the first year second year immediately after interest payments are made. The spectrum of interest rates are as follows S01 is equal to 6 percent, F12 is equal to 7 percent, this is a forward rate, this is today's spot rate and for the one year deposit and F23 this is the forward rate for a two year, uh, one year deposit to be made at the end of two years and that is equal to 8 percent. The current value of the bond or the current price of the bond V0 is equal to C1 upon 1 plus S01 plus this it is given by this expression here. Uh, we have already done it earlier. So, this expression when I put the various values, uh, we find that this is equal to 134.4658. This is the spot price of the bond or the value of the bond at T equal to 0. Now, for T equal to 1, what do we have? The forward price at t equal to 1 year that is at the end of the first year. The price, what is the forward price? Please understand this point. It is the price worked out at t equal to 0 for delivery of the uh, uh, bond at t equal to 1 year. Actual delivery of the bond would be at t equal to 1 year after the first coupon is made. Please note this expression means that it is after the first coupon is made. Okay. So, the future value of the spot price that was equal to 134.4658 into 1.06 minus 20, this 20 is the coupon at t equal to 1 year, 122.5337 is the answer. This is the one year forward price. And if you want to work out the one year forward price immediately before the coupon uh, is paid uh, immediately before C1 is paid, it will obviously turn out to be 142.5337 and the amount of C1 will be added to this expression. And you can also work out the same forward price T equal to 1 year uh, at T equal to 1 year by using this expression here, by using this expression and again we arrive at the same, same result. This coincides with this. So, this is the example which illustrates the forward price of a bond. Now, in the case of zero coupon bonds, in the case of zero coupon bonds, this formula simplify a lot. Why? Because the, we do not have any intervening cash flows. What is a zero coupon bond? A zero coupon bond does not pay any coupons during its lifetime. If there is an initial investment and then the and there is a redemption of the investment value plus the return thereon uh, whatsoever that interest uh, figure may be. So, zero coupon bond is a bond which has no coupon payments during the life of the bond uh, which is sold or which is uh, issued at a certain value and redeemed at the value plus interest for the period for the period of the life of the bond and there is no intervening cash flow during the life of the bond there is no coupon payment i uh, reiterate this fact so all the intervening terms in the valuation formula disappear and we get this equation number 1 which is obviously much simpler than what we have uh, uh, in the earlier slide, but which is a simply uh, a modification of that by putting the intervening coup cash payments equal to 0. These are the, this is equation number 2 represents the forward value uh, at the end of 1 year and equation number 3 represents the forward value at the end of 2 years, equation number 3 and so on. So, the expressions on the right hand side simplify because there are no intervening coupon payments, they are 0. Now, bond valuation by the binomial model, this is a very interesting uh, approach to the valuation of a bond. So, far the valuation of the bond that we have discussed is through uh, using the arbitrage free pricing model. Now, we come to a slightly different model which is called the binomial model. Uh, why it is called the binomial model? We will come back to it. Why do we need this binomial model? There is a very interesting rational behind it. The rational behind this is that in so far as simple uh, and 
bonds without embedded options are concerned, plain or straight bonds are concerned, bonds which do not have any options attached to them. I will come back to this in detail uh, uh, as we proceed uh, with this topic, but the basic thing is that uh, uh, in the case of bonds which are uh, um, which are straight in nature or which do not have any embedded, embedded options, the cash flows from the bonds are pretty much fixed because the neither the issuer of the bond nor the uh, bond holder has any discretion to make uh, early uh, early um, buying of the bond or early selling of the bond as the case may be early uh, re returning of the bond. So, in that case the cash flows are pretty much fixed. However, when we talk about bonds which have a options attached to them. For example, if a bond has a call option attached to it, that means what? That means, the issuer of the bond has the right, has the discretion and to uh, buy, buy back or to call back the bonds to recover the bonds from the, uh, from the uh, bond holder um, by paying an appropriate sum of money at an appropriate point in time, which is specified in the issue document. Similarly, in the case of bond which has a put option attached to it, the seller of the, uh, the bond holder rather, the bond holder has the option to sell back the bond to the issuer of the instrument if it deems appropriate in terms of the issue contract, issue document. Now, in this case when we have such instruments, what happens is that the cash flows that arise during the life of the bond tend to vary. The cash flows during the life of the bond tend to vary and obviously, uh, the maturity of the bond would also be uh, not, would also not be fixed because the, uh, in the case of a call option, the issuer of the instrument has the right to call back the bonds at an earlier date compared to its original uh, and described maturity and in the case of a portable instrument the bond holder has the right to sell back the bond to the issuer at an earlier date. So, neither the cash flows from the instrument nor the maturity of the instrument remain fixed because of the exercise of the option. So, we need an approach which is relatively more flexible which we can use for the valuation of these option bonds also, option embedded bonds also. That is where the importance of this binomial model comes into play. However, what we will do is we will use the binomial model first to value straight bonds that is bonds which do not have any embedded options and then we will extend this model with through examples to consider cases where the, uh, the model can be used for valuation of option embedded bonds. So, let me quickly read out the slide. While we can value option free bonds with a simple spot rate curve like we have done earlier in the last few slides, for bonds with embedded options changes in future rates will affect the probability of any option being exercised and the underlying future cash flows. So, in the case of bonds which have embedded options, any change in interest rate may induce the seller of the bond with the call option to exercise the call option bond or the buyer of the bond, the bond holder to uh, exercise the bond if the interest rate change to his benefit. Thus, we need a model that allows both rates and the underlying cash flows to vary to value bonds with embedded options. One such model is the binomial interest rate tree framework. So, I will continue after the break from here, I will explain the binomial interest rate tree and then we will use it in examples to value the, uh, to value the option uh, free bonds and then the bonds with embedded options. Thank you.